Hi all, it's Moz and we are doing part three of this Tiger One build from FX. So if you watched the previous video, we actually built this tank from this kit here, which is the Tiger One from FX. And now it's time to start doing some painting. If you missed the build of this tank, you can click this link here and it will take you to the previous video. So now we need to go back into the box and retrieve some of the items that were in the starter set. You're going to need the three paints that came with the kit. You will also need this number two humble paintbrush. A couple of other items I suggest you get hold of. One is these stirring sticks or some sort of stick to stir the paint with. I get these from McDonald's. These are coffee stirrers and they make really good stirring sticks. Some blue tack. I'll show you what I use blue tack for as we get into painting the model. You will also need some tap water. Not to drink, you're gonna use this with the paint. And a bonus product if you have one is a flat brush. I use a humble flat brush but you can find these in any art store. You don't necessarily need to use a flat brush, but I find it easier to use this to put on the final coats. And don't forget your before you start guide, because we'll be using this to explain some of the processes and techniques I use when painting this tank. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, would you mind just clicking subscribe and then also clicking the bell and then select all and you will not miss another video from this channel. So now let's start with painting the tank. On the back of the starter kit box, it tells you the colors that you need for this tank. And at the moment, the main paint we're going to be using is number 94 because we are going to paint the body and the turret. You will get this little pot of paint and if you open up the lid carefully, you'll see that it's very watery. That's because the pigment has gone to the bottom and the, and the water basically is on the top. So you need to give this a really good stir. Get your stirring stick and give it a good stir. The secret to this paint is to make sure it is really well stirred, but also add a few drops of water to this to thin it down just a little bit more. And then stir it a little bit more. With all modeling, preparation is key. Now we have stirred our paint, I get some blue tack and then I place the blue tack underneath the tank and I get another stirring stick and I press that onto the tank. And that way you can hold the tank and position it to make it easier to paint. Just something I picked up over the years with these little tanks and uh, it does make it easier. I also use this technique when I'm painting a plate. Your paintbrush will be a little bit stiff so what I suggest is dip it in some water get some paper towel and just wipe the brush and that way it flexes up the, bri the bristles ready to use. So now it's time to load up the paint onto the brush and then we start painting. Now, as you can see, it's gone on a little bit rough and that's okay because you're gonna be building up with layers. 
that's the point of this paint it's not a one coat does it all you need to build it up so imagine this is being more like the prime coat which basically then bonds paint between the plastic and itself so you put it on a little bit rough it's a little bit thin but it doesn't matter because the more you build up the paint the better it will look and at this point here we're going to leave this to dry and then we're going to move on to the turret Again, we've got a stirring stick. We're going to use that to give us help to, that will help us paint this turret. And there you go. You can leave that also to dry. In the last video, I forgot we need to uh, glue these in. So again, we get some of the poly cement and we will then glue these together. Then once they're glued, we will then paint this up. So I've left this to dry for 10 minutes and now it's time to put on the second coat. While those are drying on their second air, we shall now start to paint, paint these little pieces too. So now we are cooking on gas. As you can see, the paint is starting to level off and it's looking pretty good you see that because you're building up layers of paint fabulous i'm really happy with how that's going so this is our two coats as you can see there are some brush marks there but they will level out the more the more layers you get on the better so it's time to put on a third layer it's always good practice to keep the paint stirred because the pigment does seem to get to the bottom so just every so often just give it a stir don't need to worry about it too much, but give it a stir in between the coats. So here we go, this is it. This should be now time for the final coat. I'm gonna switch over now to my Humbrew flat brush. I just prefer to finish off using a flat brush. Obviously you can still carry on and use your Humbrew uh, number two. But this is, I just, uh, you know, it's 
so it's a nice finish using this brush here. So one more coat all over and um, hopefully then we'll start with uh, painting up these uh, tracks. So paint has been stirred, so now it's time to go in and give this a final coat. Just one thing I mentioned, I try to go in one direction with the final coat. So I'm going left to right with this one, just to give it that final look. So now it's time to paint the tracks. Now I'm gonna use a bit of blue, blue tack again to keep them upright while I paint. And we're gonna do them, we're gonna do uh, two coats with the, uh, with the paint. And uh, so we're gonna do one half and then the other half. That's basically how we do it. So we're gonna need the paint here, which is number 53, which is what the uh, um, instructions tell us, number 53 to go there and it's time to lay down some paint. So, stirring stick in hand, we're gonna give the paint a really good mix again. And this is actually quite thin, considering. So, we're gonna give this a really good stir. We're gonna add a few drops. Of and stir that in as well. And that will give us a nice thin mixture to be able to apply this paint Two, two or three coats as well on the tracks. So the paintbrush has been cleaned, dab it into the paint, and then we start painting. And again, you're treating this paint like a primer, like a first coat. These have been washed, but you can see the surface tension with, you know, with the, with the, the, the plastic. It is okay, just do some nice flash strokes and you'll get the coverage you need. Remember this is just the base coat, so the other paints will tend to stick on top of this one. Try and go as far around as we can, and then onto the next track. And then we leave that to dry. And now it's time for the second coat. There you go, that's the second coat. And now we do one final coat on this side. And now it's time to do the other side. And now it's time to put the tracks on, so you need to have a good look and just see where the pins are and just gently push them in and then give them a, a firm push just to make sure that that's the dry fit so now we know they fit perfectly we can then remove them and then we can glue up these pins i suggest just gluing up these pins that's all you need to do with some of the cement Just firmly press the, the tracks into the body and there it is, all 
cemented together and then we do the same for the other side and there you go that's the model put together now you notice there's some silver that's ended up on the gearing it's quite simple get the paint and then just paint up over the silver and it should become uniform Brilliant. On the instructions, you can see there's some places that need some extra color. So that there, 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 and there. I think that's basically it. Need um, some silver, and that also needs some silver as well. And also that gun there needs some silver too. Always remember to stir the paint, because even after a few hours, it does uh, tend to separate. So we'll take off the turret, and I'm just gonna gently paint these in so all I do is I get a very tiny amount at the end of my brush and I just gently carefully press the paint onto the, the tools here if you see that seems to be amazing but just gently paint them in Now, if you remember in the instructions, we had some small parts to put on here. Looking at the instructions, you can see there's that part there to go on. If we dry fit to make sure it looks okay, then we need the tiniest amount of cement. A tiny amount. Push that down into position. And there we go. That piece is now fitted on the turret. Again, on the back, we got some pieces to fit. So we cut them off the sprue. And uh, again, we find the edge, just, just dry fit that there to make sure it's all okay. Just a tiny bit of uh, sanded needed there. I think that should uh, fit in there nicely. We drop this piece into the cement. Put some cement on there. And then we place that into the hose and just press it. Just press it enough. It goes flat. There you go. That's the first bit done. Again, make sure that it all fits nicely. You can see there's a little bit of a, an edge there. So just sand that bit off. If you want to be as flush as possible, test it. Perfect. Into the cement and then onto the back. And there's a pair of wings there on the back. Finally, these two pieces here that was left go into these holes here. You do have to make sure there's uh, no paint in these holes. Because sometimes paint does get in these holes. And again, double check the instructions to make sure they go the right way around. And you can see that yeah, basically you've got the three bolts at the bottom there. So you want the bolts at the bottom. It's easy to go in like so. So you can see those three bolts. There's the first ones in. Glue to this, so cocktail stick. And just dab in the hose. And then that then can get placed on top. Perfect. There's the first one. Add some more cement. little bit in each hole again. And there you go, that's the build completely done. Now we need to move on to the decals. So guys, we now go on to the section where we put the transfers or the decals or decals onto the model. You are gonna need a few tools to do this job properly. You're gonna need a sharp pair of scissors, you're going to need some tweezers, 
you're going to need some cotton buds to soak up the water. You will also need your brush. Okay, so use this brush, make sure it's nice and clean from any paint. So uh, you need your brush as well. And you're going to need some, I use cold water, but people say warm water is better. I think if it's a bit warm, it comes off the backing paper or the backing card a bit quicker, but I always use cold and I don't find it a problem. Now, just like the sprues, this decal sheet has numbers. So you've got one, two, three, and four. And uh, you look at the instructions, and uh, you will see where they go. So we're looking for number one at the minute. So there is number one, and basically it's got like a, a cutout. Basically you're gonna put it there. There you go, you see number one goes there. So you're looking for number one on the sheet, which is that one. And you can see that you can just see in the light, there's a little bit of film on top. That's the actual transfer there. So you're looking for the 334 and the uh, German symbol there. And there you go, there's the symbol there. And then what they've done is they've just done a little cut out just to show you exactly where it goes. It goes on top of that, all right? And then you've got number two, which is that side there. Number three is, where's number three to? Uh, so there's number three there, and you also have a number three there. So on the sheet, you can see there's number one, number two, and then you've got three and three, so you've got two the same. And then on the very back of the turret there, you've got that one there which is number four. It's pretty straightforward, and uh, you'll see how we uh, put them on the model. Let's get on to cutting out the decals. So we're gonna go for number one, and we're gonna use these sharp scissors here and cut around the decal. So there you go. That's decal number one. We're gonna get our tweezers, hold the paper, and we're gonna put it in the water and just let it sit there for a bit. And just let it soak up some of the water. And what I do is I just drop the water off, let it drip a little bit, and then place it on my workbench and just leave it to soak in. Now you can use your brush, a little bit of water on the brush, and then just press on the transfer just to see. If it starts to move, you know that it's roughly ready to come off the backing paper. Now you can see, if I bring the camera in closer, now you can see if I just push the brush down, you can see the transfer is peeling off the card. And so you can see it moving. There you go, it's moving now. Now here's a technique for putting that decal on the tank. So we'll put it on its side. We'll put the model on its side and then what we do, we'll put a bit of water down first. So we cover the section we're gonna put the transfer on with water. That helps, that helps it slide. And then carefully with the uh, brush, Hold the transfer and just gently put it off the tank. It doesn't matter that it's not straight because you can adjust you can adjust the position using the brush. So also you can use a cocktail stick, but be very careful when you do this to manipulate the transfer into position. Be very careful with the cocktail stick that you don't rip it. There's a little bit more water and we need to place it so it's just underneath there. I'm gonna place it there. I like it there actually. I know the instructions say that it should go over it slightly, but I'm just I'm gonna do it there. So I think that looks pretty good. So there you go, that's in position. And then you get yourself your little cotton bud and then just wipe away by rolling over the transfer just to soak up any excess water and then just basically firmly not too firmly but just enough just to roll it like a rolling pin action 
happens to keep the transfer on the model. And I think that's pretty good, to be honest. I'm quite happy with that. Then you do the same for the other side. And then we do exactly the same again with the rest of the transfers. Now, if you feel confident, you can actually pick up the transfers with the actual paintbrush and place them into position and roll them off the brush. That's if you feel confident doing that. If not, just, just push it off with using the backing paper. And then the final one here goes on the back of the turret, that one there. To make it a bit easier, I'm going to turn the turret on its side because it'd be easier to place it on there. As you can see, they can be very fragile, so you've got to be very careful. This one's actually just come apart, come away. It's not a problem. We can put them in position, and then you can just wipe that in. So even though it kind of came away, I was able to keep it in position. That's the good thing about these transfers. The film in between can be a little bit fragile, but you'll get there in the end, I promise you. So yeah, a bit of a mistake there, but uh, there it is. It looks pretty good. One other place you could put a transfer is you can actually um, use this as a transfer as well, which is what we're going to do. We're going to place that section there. We're going to cut this out. We're going to put that underneath the model. I'll show you in a minute. We're going to place that there so you know what you've built. You can turn your model upside down. A little bit of water. So if you forget which tank you've done, or can't recognize it, you'll know by turning upside down, you can see that you've built the Tiger One. And there you go. So there you are. That's the build of the Airfix 1 to 72 scale Tiger One, the beginner's starter set. I hope you've gained so much valuable information from this series. We've gone through what the parts are called, the sprues. We showed you how to use the instructions. We've showed you how to uh, cut off the parts, make sure that they fit by using a brilliant technique, which I see very few people do these days, is dry fit. You know, if you don't dry fit, you can't guarantee that it's going to even look good. So always dry fit when you're building your kit. And then once you know it's looking good, then you can cement. That is just, just that is the real secret of building a, a model kit, is the fact that you dry fit. And if you see there's any errors, you can sort it out, then you glue it. Um, we've gone through the painting, we've gone even through the stages of the decals and you're left with a beautiful model. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, click like. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, ring that bell, select all and you'll never miss another video from us again. Any questions, any comments and your thoughts on this kit, leave them in the box below because I do reply. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.